You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. I um, listen to a wide variety of music. Because at my age, I've had a chance to be exposed to everything from... Uh, I've been exposed to, uh, oh my gosh, it's embarrassing, the 70s and the disco age. And I promise you I didn't wear the bell-bottom pants. But I was exposed to it. And, and I've been exposed to the movie music from the 80s and the 90s. And, and, and you know, my children, I don't understand the stuff that they're listening to. And I can't even understand the words. And I don't get it. Uh, but I do listen uh, to a little bit of country music now. I find it very relaxing for me. And there's a song out there that uh, um, the, the title of the song is Everything That Glitters Is Not Gold. Okay? Okay. And 716, you had, an, you had a, an acknowledgement and you smiled. So talk to me about what you think that means. The things look really nice on the outside, but once you get on the inside, be it a person, be it a uh, piece of equipment, be it whatever, it may not be the same as what you're supposed to Right. And sometimes uh, you get into it and you see this, this, this gold glitter, and it could be, like you said, it could be a job. Or someone has a job and they make the job sound absolutely wonderful. And then suddenly you get in the job and you find out, oh my gosh, it's too late. I'm in this situation. I don't really know what I got involved in. And you're, you're blinded. And can people be blinded by the glitter? Is there anybody who believes that you can't be blinded by the glitter? Okay. <laughs> many, many years ago, I um, was reading a story. Okay, and I'm guilty as well. Sometimes I read their stuff as well. I, I like juror number uh, 977. I try to avoid it. But I read a story about a 92 uh, year old millionaire, and he married an 18 year old woman. And I think that's a big age gap. Okay, yeah. juror 779, you're shaking your head. Okay. 74 year age difference. Is that an example of, uh, uh, you know, looking at the glitter and maybe not thinking it's gold? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah. Juror number 1078. Is that a case of looking at the glitter and not realizing that there's no gold there? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. So sometimes you, you get into these positions and, and maybe you're fooled or maybe you're tricked. Or maybe you're convinced of something and it all sounds really great. And I don't want to just talk about relationships. I want to talk in general. And, and you could be uh, convinced to say things, to do things, to act a certain way, and be drawn into something. Do people agree that that's something that in real life, those sort of things happen? I haven't uh, spoken to 732. And you didn't give me a big nod. So I guess I'd like to see if you can talk about that a little bit. Don't want to talk? If you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. You have a lot of words in there. But I'm not sure I completely understand exactly what your question was. Or the okay. amount of verbiage that was used. Okay. Would you yeah. clarify that? Well, I, let, me, let me ask you this. Do you have any difficulties with the idea of, of, of my song, Everything That Glitters Is Not Gold? You don't live to be this age and have grown kids and not experience that in some right in some way, shape, or form. In some capacity. Okay, thank you. And then again, um, when you're looking at a, an important decision in, in your life and making a, a big decision in your life, is it a checklist of things you go off to make a big decision? Do you just uh, say A to B, B to C, C to D? E to F, or are there emotional factors and other factors that you need to consider? It's not just it's not just black and white when you're making huge decisions. First, there's personal and emotional considerations that you need to make when you make a decision. Everybody agree with that? Okay. And everybody again would agree that um, when you're making a decision. And should you be on the jury, you're committing to applying facts and evidence. 
and that you will not speculate about anything. Is that fair? I'm going to talk to you about one more topic, and I always I will leave this to the end. Okay. And I want to talk about graphic photos. And you're going to see graphic photos. And these graphic photos are going to hurt your hearts. I'm in this case. These graphic photos hurt my heart. I want to ask you folks, is it fair to look at graphic photos and because it's upsetting to you that that anger or emotion or whatever emotion you feel should be taken out on Chad. Does anybody agree that when you look at graphic photos, you should immediately take it out and blame him for those graphic photos? Again, you should look at, and, and as an example, I think it was um, Juror 1078, and it may have been, may have been uh, 997. One of you spoke about um, that there's images and, and photos showing, and, and media does this to sensationalize and try to draw. I guess it was uh, 1078, you're nodding, nodding your head. The media shows graphic photos or images to gain a reaction from you, which sort of steer you in how they want you to feel or think, right? The concern is this, is that if you're shown these graphic photos that hurt your heart, is it fair to immediately put the cause and the blame on Mr. Daybell just because the photos are graphic? Everybody agree? Do you all agree with that? Because again, what we're doing is we're looking at facts and evidence. We have to consider the facts and evidence. And again, everybody commits to that, right? All right. I want to thank you, folks. Um, I know this isn't easy. I know that's very difficult, and, and both parties need to have time to be able to spend with you and, and get to know your views on things. And I, again, I want to thank you for, for spending the time with me, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you, folks. Judge, that's all I have there. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Uh, this when the proceedings then we're going to take up individual for dire of this remaining group. Uh, we'll go false number to highest, so starting with juror 716. So, um, follow, please rise for the other jurors to be excused and 716 in our name. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Thank you for. Uh, returning again this morning, Juror 716, we're going to conduct some individual questioning of you at this point, as well as all the other jurors that remain. I didn't see any information in the questionnaire about concerns of prior case knowledge, nor did uh, this juror indicate they had anyone asked. So there is some indication that you may suffer hardship if you're required to serve for this time. I don't think you pointed that out again this morning, but there are some questions about that in your questionnaire. So if the state wants to conduct any additional board dire on hardship, we can start there and then I'll see if the defense has any questions following that. Thank you, we do, Your Honor. So I do just have a few questions about sort of comments. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. So do you have me have your questionnaire with you? I just might invite you to go to pages 20 and 21, and I would just call your attention on page 20 under the <clears throat> question number one in the trial length. It indicated I work three days a week. I would have to arrange this with my boss to find a workaround for my work during this time. I was only project manager. Can you explain what did you mean by that? And is it still a concern that it could potentially impair your ability to serve on the jury? I work for a very small um, construction company, construction company, and I manage construction projects. Um, I did talk to my supervisor, who was actually the owner of the company, and he said he could fill in for six to ten weeks, however long that his trial would be, he could fill in that role with project manager. So that's no longer. Okay, okay. So then you don't feel like you would impair your ability to serve. Okay. 
And I'll just go down to one more comment. Um, you did also indicate that you'd lose pay for six weeks. Um, is that still accurate, or is your employer going to help compensate? I'm talking about that. These very generous. That same that you will, but I also get um, a pension. So I, I have another. So as you said, there, you're not concerned about loss of pay if you're a juror. Thank you. Um, anything else that you you need to discuss about potential hardship or you don't know? No, I don't have any more questions. Judge, I don't have any questions on bias or hardship. Okay, thank you. What we'll do next then is go through a different topic that's included in your questionnaire, Juror 716. Uh, if you have a copy there, please turn yours to page 12. In the questionnaire, we asked you about your attitudes regarding the death penalty. And do you recall thinking about those questions and putting these responses in the questionnaire? And as you sit here today, do you still feel the same way in terms of how you answered those questions? Yes, I do. All right. I do want to notify you in this case, uh, when you're filling out the questionnaire, perhaps you're thinking hypothetically, but here in the case, it may actually be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty. And remember, any penalty you're considering should be done as if it would be absolute and carried out in the case. So with that in mind, I'll just have a few questions for you about your responses. You first indicated on page 12, in the option of supporting or opposing the death penalty, you said you support. Uh, is that still the way you feel today? You support it, um, depending on you know the case evidence, and if it's proven, and that should be the crime the punishment for that crime, yes, you support it. Okay. If you turn one more page down to page 13. Okay. On that page, we gave you a choice of seven different options that most, uh, for you to select what most accurately represents the way you feel. And I assume you read through each of those, then you selected uh, letter C which is, I generally favor the death penalty, but I would base a decision to impose it on the facts, law, and instructions in the case. Do you think that still most accurately represents the way you feel of those choices? Yes. Okay. Do you believe uh, that the death penalty, or would you be in favor of it in every case where a murder has been committed? No. All right. Uh, just one final question for you then. Do you think there's anything at all about your views on the death penalty that could prevent or substantially impair your ability as a juror to perform your duty in this case and follow the court's instructions? All right, that concludes the questions the court has on the topic. Does the state have any questions? We do not, Your Honor. Any questions from the defense? Just briefly. Um, in, in your questionnaire, you said uh, you know, punishment, basically the punishment should be crime, right? So if there were to be a conviction in a case, if it's a murder conviction, and one of the options is the death penalty or life in prison. In your position, if there was a conviction for a murder and there was enough evidence to support that there was a murder convicted, is, is your decision going to be for an automatic death penalty in that case? No, it depends on the case. You could have a case where it's self-defense or anything. So no, it'll be based on the evidence. Other than self-defense, if it's truly a conviction, they say, yes, this was determined to be a true conviction for murder and someone was murdered. Is that a case where it's an automatic death penalty? No. So if the judge were to instruct you that first you're to look at the evidence and make a determination, the second part would be to, uh, after you make a determination, you're to evaluate all of the facts related to that case and there are going to be two options. One will be life imprisonment. One will be the death penalty. Can you commit to us today that you will look at the facts and the evidence when in the sentencing phase, if there were to be one, and make your decision based on the facts and the evidence of the case? Yes. Thank you. And I appreciate that. All right. That'll conclude the individual voir dire for this juror. So I'll go ahead and have you return with the bailiff to the jury room for further instructions. So next, talk to juror 7-3. 
I'm sorry, 722. All right, thank you. Juror number 722, you're returning to discuss some of the information in your questionnaire outside the presence of the other jurors. Uh, the first thing that we want to discuss with you at this time would be your knowledge of this case and whether or not that may have led to you forming any kind of opinion. So I would note that the jurors stated they um, followed the case somewhat and have some information about it. Uh, I also indicated they have not formed an opinion, but we need to discuss this further. So I'll let the state proceed with some individual for dire to see if there's any bias here. Good. Good. Uh, in this case, uh, you indicated that you watched the news on this, on this case. Uh, and it didn't sound from your questionnaire like you would learn a lot about the case. But if you're comfortable, would you mind kind of telling me what you did learn about the case? Um, I actually did follow up quite a bit. I I was interested, I guess, in it. Um, so what I understood um, was just what the, the news said, and you don't know necessarily if that's or true or not. Um, for whatever reason, it was interesting, and I enjoyed learning about it. But I knew that I didn't have enough information for that uh, case for me to make a judgment. Did you watch any court proceedings uh, in any other cases related to this case? Um, I remember there being an audio that was available for people who watched, uh, listened to a bit of that, but not watched. Okay. And what was that audio of? From, I think it was um, a couple of days um, around the autopsies being shown in the pictures, um, just what the, the judge was saying you know, and what the, you know, the happenings of that episode, it's not an episode of that day. Sure. Are you aware if that was a preliminary hearing or a trial or? or it was in the trial. It was in the trial. And that would be the trial of uh, Lori Bellow. Lori Bello. Okay. Uh, did you watch or listen to any other court proceedings surrounding the charges against Lori Fallow? Um, I, not really, no. Did you form any opinions about Lori Fallow and whether or not she uh, was guilty? No, I, 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 it always just kind of confused me. I, you know, I figured there was certainly stuff that went on that I didn't know about. And somehow it wasn't something I needed to worry about, but for whatever reason, something was interesting. And the evidence that you did listen to in the trial, did any of that relate to the defendant, Chad Daybell? No. And you understand that as Mr. Daybell sits here today, that he is innocent until the state meets its burden of proving him guilty. Correct. So he's entitled to a presumption of innocence. Yes. And you have not formed any opinions about Mr. Daybell's guilt? No. Okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions for this juror. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fahey. Mr. Pryor. Good morning. Good morning. Did you happen to watch uh, any documentaries on this case? I did watch one. Which um, one was that? I think it was the Netflix one. Okay. <laughs> did you watch anything on Dateline? No. Mm -hmm. How much of the trial did you actually watch? Um, probably like that. Everybody here in Boise area, you know, you clicked on the, the headlines and read a bit of what occurred the day before. Okay. But at least a portion of it, you took the time off out of your, and you have six children. You have a, um, well, I'm a state, I, I'm, I live alone now, so okay. I'm an empty nester, so okay. not as busy anymore. Okay, and I noticed that. So you did have the time to uh, to sit down and watch part of the trial if you felt you wanted to. Yes. And, and really what you were trying to do is just educate yourself about the facts of the case. Correct. Okay. And there, there was an interest there. Mm -hmm. There was. Okay. Um, and as, as part of that interest, um, you have an idea about some of the facts and how you feel about those facts. Would that be fair? Probably, yeah. And part of the process is that despite your knowledge of the facts, despite whether you have an idea of what you think about the case at the present time, when you're making the decision 
we would like you to be uh, fair and impartial and be able to block out those those images, block out that knowledge that you've gained. And you would agree with me that you've had extensive media exposure to this. Would that be fair? Probably, yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. And there's been a very high interest in your regard about this case. Would that be fair? Yes. Other than your family uh, and, and people who are very important in your life, this was an important thing for you to look at it, and you were you were drawn to this. Would that be fair? Oh, I wouldn't say that it was really important, but, you know, when you got home from work and you wanted to relax for a little bit, I checked the news, and then I did a little bit more work, turned on the TV, you know, nothing terribly. Right. Watched a documentary. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't obsessive. That no, much you're saying. no, 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 no. But you watched the documentary, you looked at some of the other stories, you, you sort of piqued your curiosity about right. that. And it wasn't hard because, you know, you looked at a lot of things as part of this. Is that fair? Right. right. So when the time comes, if you're chosen as a juror, you form sort of an impression in your mind about this case. Would that be fair? Probably, but also at the same time, um, as my number was called and everything like that, I'm, I'm confident within myself that I wouldn't be impartial about it. Okay. But, you know, and, and that's... I appreciate you saying that. I really do. Because it's important that despite the fact that you've had a, a, a massive amount of medium exposure, you would agree with that. You have, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that um, you have, and I want to be careful, you formed an impression of this case. Probably. Uh, you still think that you could go into the jury pool and, and be absolutely impartial and not consider what you learned about this case, maybe block this out despite the impression that you've already formed. Yeah. Okay. I would be able to. And Judge, I'll move for cause here. All right. I've uh, been listening through the questioning on this with Juror 722. Um, I have a couple of follow-up questions. You, you do seem to have somewhat actively followed that previous case. Did you uh, watch, for example, the verdict in the case? of Lori Vallow's trial? I think I did. At the end of the day, I, I wasn't, it wasn't live. All right, and do you know how her trial turned out? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you the specifics of all the different charges, but and they, they found, found her guilty. Okay, and do you know what her sentence was? Or did you watch anything involving her sentencing? I probably did a lot of it. I. I don't really think a lot about afterwards. Um, I think she got life. All right, I appreciate your responses here. Um, you've stated pretty unequivocally that you could be impartial in the case, and I'm not challenging or questioning that. The concern I just have here is whether or not implicitly that would sway your opinion one way or another, knowing what occurred in that other case, and most importantly, um, some knowledge and observation of evidence that was admitted, which may be the same evidence in this case, or may leave you wondering why evidence you saw in that case doesn't come into this case. I do find it problematic, and so for those reasons, I am going to sustain the request to strike this juror based on a uh, bias in terms of too much information and knowledge about the other case that's already been through trial that would overlap this case. So uh, for that reason, you'll be excused from your service. Thank you very much for taking the time to complete your questionnaire and coming back this morning, and you can be excused. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's next talk to Juror 732. All right, we are on the record with Juror 732. This Returned here for individual questioning and for Dyer. Uh, this juror has some case knowledge and may have some information about the case, so we're going to discuss that with you outside of the presence of other jurors. And I'd like to hear some inquiry from counsel as to whether or not there may be bias based on previous knowledge of facts of the case. So who's going to conduct for Dyer for the state? I will, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Wood, you can commence. Juror 732, uh, just as a reminder, there's no wrong answers here. Just uh, tell us how you feel, and uh, and if there's 
Again, there's no right or wrong. Um, in your questionnaire, it sounds like you know do, you do know a little bit about this case, and you talked about uh, info from early in the reporting. Do you recall what you saw and about when you saw it? Um, no, and most of my information, I think, is around um, missing children. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that would pique my interest. I am very selective in, in my news. I don't watch the news. I read the news. I um, want to try and balance between the one market and avoiding stuff that I think uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so missing kids is, is priority um, or in interest or so I remember a little bit of information about that. Um, once it was on my radar that it was a um, potential murder trial or murder situation, um, I just kind of the story. Okay. So really early on, um, I really avoid sensational stories. Um, I like to sleep. Understood. If, if I can't impact something, I don't necessarily need to. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall, you said online news. What what sources of uh, online news do you usually look at? Um, for local news, I use the three big Channel 7, Channel 2, Channel 6, um, their websites. I um, used to subscribe to the Statesman, so I would get some information from the Statesman. I don't want to pay for those subscriptions, so I don't get that anymore. Um, national news is usually BBC, um, Associated Press. As a general rule, I try to avoid things that are all right. Gotcha. Um, on page 18 of your questionnaire, if you can turn to it, there's a question eight, and it it's the what have you heard. And it seems like you know some, some of the basic facts and individuals involved. And I think that's largely headlines. Um, you can't open it up and look through the news. When you see the sure. headlines, you decide what you're going to read and what you're not going to read. Okay. Um, so you do say that uh, and then in 8A, it <laughs> says, could your knowledge of any of these individuals prevent you from acting impartially? You did say no. Is that still how you feel? Correct. Um, and you, uh, down on page 19, it says, uh, where it asks, would you be able to put what you have heard out of your mind and render an impartial ver verdict based solely upon the evidence presented in this courtroom? You do say yes. And is that still your position that you can commit to this court, to, to this defendant, to the state that... Uh, you will not rely on anything you did learn uh, in the media. I can commit to you. Okay. Um, you. You did bring up one thing earlier, and I just want to talk about it real quick. And it's it, you talked about being able to sleep, and I think that's the second time maybe you've mentioned that today. Um, do you have any concerns about? Uh, uh, the subject matter of this case uh, affecting you emotionally, mentally? My guess is it would impact almost everybody in some way, shape, or form. That doesn't mean I don't take this responsibility seriously. Um, I know what my limits are. I don't watch true crime. I don't watch mm -hmm. animal thrillers. I don't read Stephen King. Um, but I, I'm pretty selective of what I take in. Um, I worked in healthcare for 20 years. Um, I spent a short period of time early in my nursing career in the emergency department. Um, part of the reason I didn't stay there long, uh, that's not for me. I don't I don't need to see gunshot wounds. I don't I, I know there's a lot out there. Uh, I spent a lot of my career seeing some pretty common things. Um, natural causes, disease, accidents. Um, so I have elected to not seek out additional. Um, that doesn't mean I can't process it or deal with it, but I have been very selective, probably in my whole entire life. 
what I choose to take in. And again, it goes back to what can I impact and what can I not impact in healthcare? I think it could have an impact. Um, that changes how you process things. Well, and I guess a good way to ask this would be, so when you were in the ER and some type of traumatic injury came in, were you still able to work through that, uh, work through your normal uh, work obligations, provide the, the level of care you were supposed to provide? Yes. And, and would you be able to do that here, even if this uh, subject matter were disturbing to you? Um, and I think you, you said it correctly, it, it probably wouldn't impact anyone who looks at it. Uh, but even if you find it disturbing, that you will be able to uh, set that disturbance aside and weigh the evidence just on the evidence and the facts, uh, rather than uh, any uh, dis just disturbing aspect of it. I'm sure your Honor, this the state has no further questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Wood. Mr. Pryor. And, and juror 732, um, did, I didn't hear whether you, did you see the Dateline and uh, the Netflix series? Did you watch those? Did you watch any? Uh, I didn't know there wasn't a series. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't watch Dateline. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't watch any news. I read news, but I don't watch. So you get most of your information off the internet and through the, the websites of these various news agencies. Is that fair? Very fair. Okay. Um, and just something piqued my interest is that you said that you choose not to view that stuff as a way to sort of shelter yourself from those, those images and that stuff because it is upsetting to you. It is. And I... Again, if I can't have any impact on something, I don't need, I don't need to know about it. Um, Do you tend to react strongly to things like that? Um, I'll hold on to it. Um, what does that mean? I still remember some really horrific patient scenarios from nursing school. I'm, I'm old. So that was a long time ago. Um, but it doesn't mean I didn't do the right thing. It doesn't mean I didn't take care of my patient. It doesn't mean that I didn't need to be there. Somebody needs to be there. Um, in, in what you read, do you have some strong thoughts on, on what you read? Um, no, because I think I disconnected fairly early on. Okay. Um, and not on any any kind of level um, that would impact any kind of trial. But gosh, when my kids were in elementary school, um, you know, they're in their 30s now, so that was a long time ago. Um, there was a school board change in Ada County, um, and I was quoted in the newspaper, the Idaho State Plan, um, and it wasn't... I said everything that they printed. I said nothing in the context that it was printed. And I was um, really impacted by that. So um, that's shaped me in a lot of ways. Um, I can read a lot of things, but before I'm going to pass judgment on anything, I want to know a lot more information. Um, I think that's a little bit why I got hung up on your question. I didn't understand your question. Were you asking me how I felt about an 18-year-old marrying a 92-year-old? Or were you asking me about everything that the nurse is called? Because I have very different opinions. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything illegal about an 18-year-old marrying a 92-year-old. If it's mutually beneficial, I'm not going to pass judgment on that. That is, has nothing to do with me. So were you asking me about that, or were you asking me about everything that glitters is involved. I mean, there's different opinions. So I have um, limited my news probably for a lot of reasons. I don't need sensationalism. And I think you can have accuracy in reporting. I don't believe that there's malicious intent in reporting, um, probably in the vast majority of reporters, um, news agencies. Um, I think they probably are presenting largely facts as they were told or that they know on that at that time. Does that mean you know the whole story? Probably not. Does that mean you would, things aren't going to come up later? Probably not. Could somebody be misquoted or out of context? 
I happen to know that personally. Um, so. I appreciate that. So what it sounds like is that in spite of the fact that you may or may not have impressions, you may have impressions in this case, but it sounds like you can compartmentalize and you can say, listen, I can push that stuff away and make an unbiased and impartial decision, despite the fact that I may have had some exposure or I may have had some influence in some way, but I'm still going to be able to, to look at this independently in spite of the fact that I've been exposed to this. I would agree with that. And I would fully expect that um, there'll be evidence today that wasn't reported on the news, even if I read all of them. I, right. I mean, I'm sure there's facts that were never reported. Um, okay. So. And in the same regard, you're, you're, uh, you've obviously spoken about a sensitivity to graphic images and, and violence, and you, you make an effort to avoid that and say, I'm not going to let that into my, uh, my, my sphere, for lack of a better word. Is that fair? Very fair. Okay. And the one, and, and please, doesn't mean that your answers are right or wrong. I'm trying to figure out, and then that's why we're talking so much in depth about this, because I don't know what to, how to process some of the stuff you're saying. Um, I guess my concern is, is that in this case, you're not going to be able to decide to keep these images out of your mind. And some of the images and discussion is going to be hurtful to the heart. And then that's where I'm, I'm hesitating. Okay? I'm going to be honest. I am. Because I, I don't know if, if pushing it out and saying, yes, I'm going to be able to look at this independently. And I, and I believe you have an ability to do that. You've worked in an emergency room. My goodness. So you, you, there must be some intestinal fortitude there. Um, I mean, significant. Uh, but I, I am still concerned and always am concerned that maybe the impact that it could have on you could in some, even a small way, impact your decision. And that's, that's where I hesitate a little bit. Um, that's valid. I, um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think it goes back to, do I have the ability to have an impact? Do I have a need to know? Um, I think if... If you're on a, uh, if you're if you handled as a juror, if you're a part of a trial, you have an impact. Right. You have an impact in somebody's, in in this case, somebody's life, not just livelihood. Um, I also have an. I mean, it's there's an impact. But I think there is a need to know. I think. Okay. Um, and that's different than just in my mind gratuitous sensationalism that. I don't need to know. Um, would this be the highlight of my anything to be on this trial? Absolutely not. Um, do I think it's important? Um, I couldn't believe more firmly in our judicial system. Right. Um, so whether I want to be or not, it's an obligation. Um, if I'm the right person, then that's what I'll do. If I'm not the right person, um, probably sleep easier. So if I understand you correctly, and then please correct me, stop me and correct me. Uh, despite all of the images and, and, and information that you've gained from this thing, at this point, despite the belief you may have come to a conclusion or not, an, an impression, despite that there's an impression because of the news and because of your sensitivity to graphics, you're going to tell me that you can block that out because there is a, uh, a, a um, I want to use the right word, uh, you can make an impact on something. And because you can make an impact, you can make a concerted effort within yourself to say, I'm not going to let my previous knowledge, my previous decisions impact me. And even though I've made those, those decisions and I've come to some conclusions or understanding, I will block those conclusions and understanding out because I think I can make an impact by participating in this process. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. Um, and I don't believe any prior information would have any impact. Okay. I think maybe you're you're questioning just the images. And I right. think that's that's where we have to block. 
That's our answer. Okay. All right. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong answer, and I'm, I'm torn here. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm torn. Um, I'm not offended by this. And Judge, I guess just because of the images, I think I'm just going to move for cause. I, I just think I have to. All right. Um, I've listened carefully to this exchange and considered the knowledge uh, you have. The question I have, uh, just to be succinct as I can, despite what you've seen and heard about this case, are you willing to commit to hold, to hold the government to its burden of proof in the case? I, I think I could, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I don't I don't see or see any reason why I couldn't fulfill my obligation. All right. Um, based on the responses there, the state has not made a request to start the defense has. I'll overrule the request for perceived bias, although this juror has expressed some knowledge of the case. <laughs> There's another topic we do need to discuss with you as well, and that is part of the questionnaire that you completed that had a section on attitudes regarding the death penalty. Do you remember reading through that section and answering your questions? I do. All right. And that starts on page 12. I will advise you that in this case, it may be necessary for you to actually make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty. And remember that any penalty you're considering should be considered as if it is absolute and will be carried out in the case. So with that in context, do you support or oppose the death penalty? You selected a choice that said you support it. Is that still the way you feel right now? Right. Okay, you next on page 13 had a series of choices, seven of them about what accurately represents the way you feel. And you selected C, which states, I generally favor the death penalty, but I would base a decision to impose it on the facts, law, and instructions in the case. Is that still an accurate representation of how you feel about the death penalty? Yes. All right. Uh, where you are in favor of the death penalty, are you in favor of the death penalty in every case where a murder has been committed? No. All right. So I just have a final question there then. Will your views on the death penalty in any way prevent or substantially impair you from performing your duties in this case to follow all of the court's instructions, including those relating to the death penalty. Mm -hmm. All right, that concludes the court's for dire on that topic. Does the state have any questions for juror 732? Not on this topic, Your Honor, thank you. No questions, Judge, thank you. All right, that will conclude your individual for dire. We'll have you return to the jury room with the bailiff and you'll receive further instructions once we've talked to the other jurors. Thanks. Thank you. Next up will be juror seven five. All right, thank you for returning, juror number seven five one. We're going to conduct some individual questioning of you um, relating to your questionnaire responses. You indicated a little bit of knowledge. Well, I'll let you determine how much knowledge you have or don't. Didn't express a whole lot in the questionnaire, but raised your card that you know something about the case. And you also made a comment uh, on page 18 of your questionnaire that uh, only the report of them missing in their deaths when asked a question about um, the people listed in that question. Uh, you also did not indicate anything regarding a trial hardship. So does the state have any inquiries that relates to bias on this juror? Just a few quick questions, Your Honor. Go ahead. Morning, man. Um, on that point that the court had made, you, you did make some comment that you had learned the report of the deaths. How did you learn about that? 
It was just media reporting. I didn't. I don't follow news, but it was on the broadcast. I don't know details, and I did not follow any of the other um, court proceedings prior to this. I don't know when it comes to news. So it is fair to say you haven't seen any documentaries, date lines? No, anything no nothing of that nature. Ever read any articles online? No. So just, just with that report, is there anything about what little you apparently know about the case that you think would impact your ability to be impartial? No. No. All right, I have no questions. No questions. All right, thank you, Council. Uh, without further questions, then, or concern of hardship, the next topic we'll discuss with you relates to that part of the questionnaire where you were asked about your attitudes regarding the death penalty. Do you recall reading through that and answering those questions? I do. All right. Since you filled out your questionnaire last week, have you had any change uh, you'd like to indicate in terms of how you answered the questions there? No. no. All right, I do want to advise you that in this case, it may be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty. And remember, as you consider that, consider it as if it would be done in absolute and carried out in the case. So knowing that um, you answered in your questionnaire uh, on the question, do you support or oppose the death penalty? You said support. Is that still the way you feel now? It is with, if the evidence dictates that that's a set appropriate, then should, yes. Okay. You filled out another choice um, when given seven choices about what most accurately represents the way you feel. And you said, uh, and I'll quote from the questionnaire, I am generally opposed to the death penalty, but I believe I can put aside my feelings against the death penalty and impose it if it is called for by the facts law and instructions in the case. Is that the way you feel as well? Yes, sir. All right, and just to be clear, you said you support it, but you said also generally you're opposed to it, but would follow instructions about it if you needed to. Can you just explain maybe a little bit more how you feel about those two choices? I'm assuming given the instruction from the court, we will be given all the facts that lead up to this case. If the defendant is found guilty, then those instructions will follow as far as what penalty would apply. It's what the law will allow. My personal opinion doesn't count. It's kind of like the black and white question. Okay, so that uh, part of your answer that said you would follow the instructions in the case, um, if you had personal feelings that were different, you still would be able to do that? Yes. All right. So based on those answers, then let me just ask you, would you be in favor of the death penalty in every case where a murder has been committed? No. Okay. And Only so facts. apologies, go ahead. Just if the if, if facts have proven the case and that's the cho choices are with the individual case by case. All right. Is there anything you think about your views on the death penalty that could prevent or substantially impair your ability to serve as a juror in this case and follow instructions about that? No. All right, that concludes the court's for for this juror on that topic. Does the state have any questions? We have no questions, Your Honor. Mr. Pryor. I have no questions, Judge. Okay, thank you so much for returning. That concludes your individual for Dyer. We'll have you go back to the bailiff with the jury room and call another juror in. 779 is up next. Council, I didn't see any location of case knowledge. Is there going to be any requests to board our um, bias from the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. None from the defense either. Okay, thank you. All right, juror 779 is returning for additional board dyer. Having reviewed the questionnaire, uh, I believe the only topic we would need to discuss are questions related to the death penalty. Does the state agree? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we won't have any further board dire on bias or hardship for this stir then, but we will ask questions as it relates to those responses on the knowledge of, or the, I'm sorry, attitudes regarding the death penalty. So, juror number 779, uh, do you recall filling out that part of your questionnaire that asked you about your attitudes on the death penalty? Yes, I do, Your Honor. 
All right. Having thought about your answer since you filled it out last week, would you change anything in there and how you filled this out or correct anything there? I don't think it would change it. Okay. I'll advise you that in this case, it may be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty. So as you're considering a penalty, you need to think about that as if it would be absolute and done and carried out in the case. Okay. Um, you had a couple of choices in one of our questions on page 12, and it was, do you support or oppose the death penalty? You did say you support the death penalty. Is that correct? Yeah. And you still feel that way now? Yes. Okay. You also had a series of choices about what most accurately represents the way you feel. And you selected a choice. Um, on page 13, that says, I am generally opposed to the death penalty, but I believe I can put aside my feelings against the death penalty and impose it if it is called for by the facts, law, and instructions in the case. So does that still explain the way you feel most accurately? Yeah, I would say, like, it, it kind of depends on the situation, but I, I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to it, but when a certain situation comes up, then I'd say I'd support it. Okay, and back to that answer, you're saying that if it were called for in this case by the facts, law, and instructions, you would uh, be able to impose it. Definitely. Okay. Uh, do you believe that you would be in favor of the death penalty in every case where a murder has been committed? No. Okay, I have one final question for you then. Is there anything about your views on the death penalty that you think could prevent or substantially impair your ability to serve as a juror in this case and follow any court instruction about the death penalty? I so. Okay, thank you for your responses. I'll ask if the state has any more dire for this juror. Your Honor, we do not. Thank you very much. No questions, Your Honor. All right, uh, juror number 779, that concludes our questions for you individually. You'll return with the bailiff to the jury room and we'll have you back here shortly. Let's talk today to juror 997. All right, thank you for returning to the courtroom, juror 997. We're going to ask you some individual questions now uh, about responses in your questionnaire. Uh, there is some indication of some knowledge about the case in the questionnaire, and I'll ask. Uh, if the state wishes to pour dire on that issue on bias. Just briefly, Your Honor. Go ahead, Mr. Woody. Juror 997, um, in your questionnaire, uh, you say you haven't followed the case, just heard some things on the local news a few years ago. Do you recall what you've heard? I think I was walking through our front room. It was when our kids were younger. And they were home and had the TV on. Um, it was a local TV station stating something about the gentleman and the female that were involved. And I think maybe they showed photos of them and that was it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you definitely have not spent a lot of time following the case? Not at all. No. Um, can, on page 18, do you have your questionnaire with you? Yes, sir. Page 18, question 8, um, you do talk about that uh, you're aware that there are children who have been killed in this case. Correct. And it's, it's, uh, it says, with, with the help of Chad. Now, is that, with the help of Chad, is that something, that is that a belief you have or just what you've heard? Just what I heard. Okay. Uh, and I do notice in the next portion of that question, it says, could your knowledge of any individuals prevent you from acting impartially in this case? And you say no. So, uh, and so it really, I guess, I just cut to the chase a bit. Is, is there anything that you've heard that would make it difficult for you to render an impartial verdict in this case? No. And, and you you understand that this defendant has an absolute right to the presumption of innocence Absolutely. until the state proves otherwise. 
And so can you can you commit to putting anything you have learned out of your mind and only making any decisions in this case based on the evidence presented in the court in this case? Absolutely. I have no other questions at this time, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Mr. Wood. Mr. Pryor. No questions, Judge Stanton. Okay. The next topic then the court will discuss uh, will be relating to your attitudes regarding the death penalty. Juror number 997 in your questionnaire, there was a section about that and you went through, read the questions and filled out your answers. Do you recall considering that section? I believe so, yes. Okay, and it's been some time since you filled out the questionnaire. Is there anything in your responses that you think you would change today? No, sir. All right, as I, uh, well, let me advise you that it may be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty in this case. And as you consider that, you need to think of it as if it should, as if it would be done absolute and carried out in the case. So with that context, then you had a choice of whether or not you oppose or support the death penalty, and you said you support the death penalty, you still agree with that in your opinion today? Yes, sir. Okay, you had a choice out of seven of what most accurately represents the way you feel, and you selected a choice that reads, I generally favor the death penalty, but I would base a decision to impose it on the facts, law, and instructions in the case. Is that still the way you feel? Yes, sir. And to be clear, then, you would follow any instructions in the case provided by the court on the death penalty? Yes, sir. Are you in favor of the death penalty in every case where a murder has been committed? No, sir, I'm not. Okay. Is there anything about your views on the death penalty that you think could prevent or substantially impair your ability to serve as a juror in this case and follow the court's instructions about the death penalty? No, sir. Okay, thanks for your responses. I'll ask if the state has any board art. Not on this subject, Your Honor. Thank you. No question. Thank you. All right, counsel, that will conclude the individual board of juror 997. You'll return to the jury room with the bailiff and we'll talk to you again shortly. Next up will be juror 1078. All right, juror 1078. Welcome back. We have some individual questions for you. In review of the questionnaire, I didn't see any indication of case knowledge or potential bias. Is the state intending to board iron on that topic at all? Well, Judge, we do have just one bias question. All right. Why don't you commence with that then, Ms. Wicks? Thank you. Ma'am, do you have your question with you? Yes. I just invite you to go to page seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on page seven, under part four, one A, it says, do you feel that a defendant should be required to testify? Did you mark that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Could you explain what you mean by that? I think when I filled this out, I didn't really understand um, what that meant exactly. But after what we heard today, what, what, we, what I learned today, um, I understand that he has to be too. And it's not required. Yeah, I just wasn't clear. Fair enough, fair enough. So is it fair to say that if if you're on the jury and the defendant chose not to testify um, and to remain silent, you, you wouldn't hold that against him in any way? No, no, now that I understand, it's not required. Thank you. Your Honor, I don't have any more questions. No questions, Judge. Thank you. All right, thanks, counsel. There's one more topic then we'll discuss with you. In your questionnaire, starting on page 12, we had you read through and answer some questions on your attitudes regarding the death penalty. Do you recall going through those questions and answering them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Having thought about your answers since you filled this out last week, is there anything you think you would change uh, on any opinion you've given here? No, I don't think so. Okay. I do want to advise you that in this case, it may be necessary for you to make a determination in regard to the imposition of the death penalty or some other penalty. And remember, any penalty you consider should be done as if it is absolute and will be carried out in the case. 
So thinking about that, you had a choice on page 12 whether or not you support or oppose the death penalty, and you said you support it. Is that still the way you feel now? Yes. Okay, if you could look on the next page on 13. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast.